Hello and welcome. Today we are doing a question from Leak Code called Set Matrix Zeros. It's a medium. Let's get started. Given an m by n integer matrix matrix, if an element is zero, set its entire row and columns to zeros. You must do it in place. So example one here, we have a grid of ones with the middle element being zero. So what we're going to return is that entire middle row being zero and the entire middle column being zero. Example two, we have two zeros in our corners, so this entire column should be zeros as well as this, and that top row should be zeros because of both our zeros. These are some constraints and a follow-up. A straightforward solution using O of M N space is probably a bad idea. A simple improvement uses O of M plus N space, still not the best solution. Can we devise a constant space solution? We want constant space. So let's think about this. Let's look at the very first example. What are our, our first thoughts as we go through this problem, right? We want a constant space solution. So what this means is our space cannot be defined by our input matrix. No matter how big or small it is, we either want to modify our input array or use a constant number of extra variables, nothing dependent on how big the input is. And after that, how do we go about actually setting these zeros? Well, initially, right off the bat, something we could do is loop through the entire grid. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 1, 1, so forth. And as soon as we come across a zero, set an entire row and column to the zero. So any index above or below it, or to the left and right of the index where we find our zero, we would set to be zero. For example, in this situation right here, we have zero, 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 one, zero, two, no zeros yet. Going into the next row, no zero. Here we come across our first zero. So what we can do is go ahead and write these to be zeros. And now that that's done, we move on. So now we are at index one, two. However, we come across a zero again. So if we continue doing what we did before, we would actually go ahead and zero out things that really shouldn't be zeros. And why is that? Once we see our first zero, when we went ahead and zeroed out the entire column and row, we overwrote information that we hadn't already seen. And doing so would impact the problem and how we actually solve it. So we can't modify things we haven't seen already. If I'm at a zero right now, I can go ahead and zero out indices below me or to the left. However, if you notice, this doesn't apply for the ones to the top or to the right of us. We've already seen those, so if we zero those out, that's okay. So what does that mean? Is that how we solve this? Yes, we can use our very first row and our very first column as sort of indications on whether or not to zero out a certain index. So what we're going to do is loop through our entire grid. And as soon as we come across a zero, we're going to set the very first element of the column to a zero and the very first element of the row to be a zero and continue iterating through. Then we go back and revisit the matrix, go through every single index again. And if the top of the column of the index we're on or the first element of the row of the same index we are on is a zero, we would set our matrix index, the one we are currently on, to be zero. Does this work? Almost. What if we have the following example? What if our entire grid is filled with ones? And we have one zero up in this corner right here. Well, if we go through, you know, we're going to set the very first element to zero and the very first element in the column to zero, which it's already there by this zero and we loop through we don't find any more zeros nothing else to change so now in our second iteration of the loop where we actually start changing the values of the indices based on the flags we see the first element is zero so now we're gonna have to actually turn this into a zero because the beginning of this row was a zero and we go through now we're here this is also a zero so is this the very first elements are zeros, same here. So the very first row and column, we wanted to keep as flags for the rest of the matrix. 
So we can't reuse those for the row and column themselves. So we're going to need to keep a separate flag for that. So what I'm going to do is have a row flag and a column flag, both initialized to false. And if we come across a single zero in either the first row or the first column, I'm going to set that those respective flags to true and go ahead and zero them out after I zero out and work with the rest of the grid starting from 1, 1 and onwards. Now I'm going to go ahead and explain all of that and do another example. So let's code this up and run through another example. We have our row flag and column flag initialized to false. The first thing I'm going to do is sort of have the number of rows and columns written out. So rows is going to be length of the matrix. Columns is going to be the length of the matrix zero. Now we loop through. So for row in rows in range rows, for column in range columns, if matrix row column equals zero. If the index we are on is equivalent to zero, now we want to make some checks. So if row equals zero, we're going to set the row flag to be true. This means we would want to go ahead and zero out our entire first row. If column equals zero, we're going to do the same thing for column. So call flag equals true. Elif row not equal to zero and column not equal to zero. This means we are in element one one onward. We're not in the first row or the first column. Well, now we see if our matrix is zero, which, you know, in this if case it would be, we go ahead and set the top and the left indices zero. So matrix row zero equals zero. So we're going to set that very first element in our row to be a zero if we come across a zero. And matrix zero column equals zero. And we're going to set that very first column to zero as well. Now what we want to do is loop through one more time. So for row in range one rows, for column in range one column, get rid of this. So now we are going to start from index 1, 1 and go onward. If matrix row 0 equals 0 or matrix 0 column equals 0. So if either flag, either we come across a 0 in that first row or the column that matches with the index we are on. So if we're on this index and we see above us, it's a zero or to the left of us, that very first element in our row is zero. If either is true, we turn our element to zero. So matrix row column equals zero. And now finally, what we want to do after this is done, now we can actually go ahead and turn the rows and columns to zero if needed, because no longer do we depend on that information. So what I'm going to do is if row flag, so if we do want to turn everything in our first row to zeros, now we can go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is matrix zero is going to equal zero times column. So remember, matrix is a list of lists. Is That first row is the first element in our list. I can just go ahead and make a list of zeros as long as our column. And if column flag, then what I'm going to do is for row in range rows, go through every single row and that first element in the row. So this way we get every single column. We're going to set to zero. So matrix row zero equals zero. And we can run this code. Accept it and submit wrong answer. Let's see what happened here. This is our input. Our output actually is not the same in length. So let's see. This should be calls for the number of columns we have in our matrix. So let's go ahead and submit again. And accepted. So talking about space and time complexity. Well, we only use two extra variables for our space and we're modifying our matrix in place 
So that's constant O of 1. And as for time, we loop through the entire matrix twice. So that's order of O of M times N, just our input array. And before we leave, let's do one other quick walkthrough example. A quick walkthrough. So this is going to be our input array. And now let's go through all of this code, right? So first line, we're going to have row flag set to false and column flag set to false. Now we loop through the entire thing. So for row and range rows, for column and range columns. If the index we are on is a zero, well, now we would go into these if conditions. So let's loop through. We come across our first zero at one, one. And once we're in here, the row is not zero, column is not zero. We're in this elif condition right here. So now we go ahead and set the corresponding flags. So I'm gonna set the first item in the column to zero and the first element in the row to be zero and continue iterating. So now moving forward, I come across this zero here. And here I see that the column is zero. So what I'm gonna do is set the column flag to be true and move on. Moving on, the next and last zero we come across is this last one right here. Row and column neither are zero. So now we just go ahead and set those first indices to zero. So now we have finished our very first for loop. We have all our flags set up. Now we go through and actually change the matrix. So we start with one, one. We're gonna start with this index and move forward. Here we see that both the beginning row right here and the beginning column are zero. So we would change this to zero, but this is already a zero. So this would just stay. Moving forward, this is a zero. We change this. The top and the left both are zero. Either way, we would change this. This is already zero. This is now a zero. Here, this is not a zero, but this is. So again, changing this element and same with this one because of this one and this one, either one doesn't matter. Here, zero, here, also a zero. This one would also be a zero as with this one. Now we have finished basically one, one onward and now we wanna check our row and column flags. So if row flag, well, row flag was never changed, it's still false. So we would never go into this condition. Now we go into this condition. So if true, column flag is set to true, so that's, you know, something we can move forward with. Now, for every single row and range rows, we're going to set that first element to each row to be zero. So we're going to change that entire first column to be zeros. Let's start with the first one, zero. We would change this again to be zero, zero, zero. And our final output would be this matrix right here. And let's remember what our input was. Our input had three zeros here, here, here. So every single column, these three columns should all be zeros, which they are. And all three of these rows should also be zeros, which they are. The only non-zero would be this three right here. And this is how we solve this. If you have any questions at all, let me down below. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Oh, <laughs>